from Paris. Let's eat, love. Nikita brought these for me to our room from this delicious boulangerie, patisserie, down the street. So let's try them. Mmm. 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 Mm. Now you know what it's like. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to eat. Try mine just in case it's different because it's shaped a little different. This is a delicious croissant. Very, very good. I also want to try a pan au chocolat. Hopefully tomorrow. There's a lot of things I still have to try. I even have the macarons in my fridge. Nikita and I were going to open them with champagne this morning, but we're like, uh oh, we don't have enough time to drink a whole bottle of champagne and then go to the Louvre Museum because that's where we're going. Nikita booked our tickets for 11 o'clock. No, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, even though I wanted to sleep in. Can you believe him? Ah, let's go. Bonjour. Bonjour. Today is the first rainy day in Paris for us. The weather has actually been super nice, but today it's a little bit spitting, which is the perfect day to go to the Louvre, as I said, over a croissant this morning for breakfast. Kita had the last few bites for me, okay? And yeah. I had to finish her coffee. <laughs> and he finished Story of our lives. <laughs> Love you. Love you. Good morning. We are at the Louvre. We're just getting in. We have virtually no lineup because we bought our tickets ahead of time. So for two euros extra per ticket, you can pretty much skip the line. Highly recommended, especially on a kind of rainy day. See, that's the line to buy the tickets now. And we're basically in. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? Monsieur Le Petit. <laughs> Le Petit. This is Nikita in a past life. I'm kidding. This is Louis the Fourteenth. Louis the Fourteenth. The, the gentleman who had the cognac produced for him. The line now. There used to never be a line. I remember when I came here like 10 years ago, but there she is. We're almost there at the Mona Lisa. seeing the Mona Lisa. There's actually a lineup to see it. The last time I came years ago, there was not a lineup to see it. You kind of just made your own line. So in a way that this is pretty good, but not remove your masks. <laughs> but it was actually quite lovely. And there's a lot of um, controversy between why this is not in Italy, because it was painted by Da Vinci. And I believe in the 1900s, it was even stolen by one of the workers at the Louvre and he brought it back to Italy. So it's actually very interesting. The history behind Italy and France and the Mona Lisa and Da Vinci is quite fascinating. So you can just feel free to Google that. It's quite, quite interesting, but it's so funny to think that why is that painting of all paintings so iconic? There's something about it that feels special when you see it definitely, but is it because it is so iconic? Who knows? But quite interesting, quite lovely. And this was Nikita's first time seeing it as well, which was really nice for me to see him experience this kind of stuff. And who is she? So she was the sitter, Lisa Gerardini, who lived in Florence, the wife of Francesco del Giacondo. So yes, this is why it's called La Giaconda. lovely paintings. So we have a mackerel, a coffee, and a water. I feel like I need to drink more water here, so. I really like the idea of seeing an unfinished painting. I don't know why. I think it's so cool. 
you can see how he started and what exactly he was working on. So it's very interesting. Love that. This is Marcus Aurelius. Yeah. It says Marc Aurelie Jeune, which I believe is Marcus Aurelius. We found Piazza Navarre. This one is really cute. This is all uh, mini paintings inside one big painting and it's all the views of modern Rome at the time. You can see a lot of iconic things like Piazza Navona, the Trevi Fountain, and so on. So again, similarly, but different scenes of Rome. So this is the sister painting essentially to that one over there. Very, very cool. I love it. Blah, blah, blah. Giuseppe di Ribera, the club foot. This is very interesting. Something that is to be seen according to our little guide. According right? to what? This little guide. Yes, correct. This is where we are. So we saw this, we saw this, this. We have to see this as well. Yeah, we're going to go back. Second row, Cleopatra. Wow. It's in, written in Russian. It's the rest I don't understand. Very interesting. <laughs> so this is the little travel kit of Marie Antoinette, my distant relative according to 23 and Me. <laughs> and this is all her things. Pretty much. So this is also was Marie Antoinette porcelain service of Queen Marie Antoinette and her family. So some nice porcelains. They're really lovely. I mean. Very timeless pieces. All these dishes are from the 18th century, but honestly, they look incredible. They look so like stylish and modern. <laughs> look how lovely these dishes are. So beautiful. What would be your favorite to drink your espresso out of? They're all so cute. My goodness. today I've noticed. Sure the Mona Lisa area was very busy but this is clearly not high season to travel so feels like we have the museum all to ourselves in this wing at least. <laughs> day because it was a little bit rainy and we saw everything we had to see. I feel like we saw a lot more than I thought we would. Well, I think so. We saw all the paintings. Probably as much as I wanted to see. Yeah. So we were here for four hours. We still didn't technically see everything, but honestly we saw enough, I, I would say. We saw a lot of yes. famous paintings, famous sculptures, ceramics, 
everything important. A lot of Italian influence in here as well. Do you think that the Mona Lisa should be in Italy? <laughs> in the Vatican Museum? Do I or, think that? Yeah, well, do you think? I, I don't have a say in this. I'm, I'm not French or Italian. <laughs> I'm asking the viewers, what do you think? Should the Mona Lisa go back to Italy? It was apparently robbed in the 1900s from an Italian. He stole it and tried to bring it back, which is kind of cute. But Someone who worked at the Louvre. Yes. Nine, but, 1911. Yes, but I think without the iconic Mona Lisa here, the Louvre would be much less exciting, you know? That's like the Probably. main thing to see. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful, so yeah. yes, I love this. It was a lot of fun. I'm happy to see it again with Nikita. It's been a long time since I've been here, probably like 10 years, and it's just beautiful. <laughs> so now we are on our way to eat at this place called La, La, La Philosophe. La Philosophes. <laughs> La Philosophes, maybe? <laughs> we're on our way to eat. We're having a nice dinner, lunch and dinner. And we're excited because this is a place that we wanted to go and it's pretty close by to the Louvre. So we'll let you know if it's worth going to, but I hear it's very good. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Cheers. I hear someone playing an Audi. I heard it from a while away, so let's go see. Walking to lunch, we found some beautiful a shopping district here, which is actually really nice. And we also found this Hotel de Ville, and it looks like they have a little Christmas market. So before we eat, we're just going to quickly check it out. Magical wonderland oh. of Christmas market this in, Christmas in the middle of a city. So cute! It's right in front of the Hotel de Ville. Hotel de Ville. De Ville. De Ville. De Ville. <laughs> the Tartal de Boeuf. Okay, I'm guessing you're gonna have some bread with it. Try it. Have a taste. Delicious beef tartare with potatoes. I'll be having the potatoes. Nikita will be having the bread right now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Old French beef tartare yeah. comes with mustard. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's, I love it that way. It's delicious. Nikita ate this and said, "Wow." You know, he doesn't really overreact. <laughs> The other one? Look, it says Maison Fondée, 1730. This is rumored wow. to be one of the oldest pastry houses. So I think maybe they have a few locations, but either way, we have some things to try at the hotel. Oui, oui. Galerie Lafayette. Oh, I'm so excited to go in here. Tomorrow, I think we have planned. Now we are on the way home. Look how beautiful. I showed you. Look, there's a Louis Vuitton ad on the outside. How, how French. Delicious Mont Blanc we're eating. <laughs> we're eating in bed in the hotel. And we also have this, which is a Paris breast. So let's give it a bite. Mind you, I want to maybe take a picture first. They got a little messed up as we were coming home, but they're just as delicious. And it's from this patisserie that I think it's Honestly, I think it's one of the oldest ones in Paris. It's 1730. Holy moly, that's old. 
Mm, this is incredible. This is their Paris breast from this petit city. Oh my gosh, so delicious. And Nikita is going to get up to champagne. It's not good. It's an extra brute. Ooh. What is the brand? Um, I'm not entirely Let me sure. See. Bruno Pallard. <laughs> Bruno and it's Pallard. extra, extra brute, extra mm -hmm. dry with the pastries because they're really sweet. Yes. This will offset it. <laughs> I have a little sommelier. But that's for just wine. This is champagne. Mmm, so good. Can't even describe. <laughs> for our Popping engagement. Ah, good job. Look, oh, well. <laughs> You're so nuts. Uh, we should save this, I think. And I just have to say that I googled this place and it is the oldest patisserie in Paris. This person made pastries for Louis the 15th. So we went in, we tried the Paris breast, which is honestly one of the best. They make it with a hazelnut cream. It was incredible. Oh my gosh, this was just incredible. I love it. Love you. Love you so much.